Welcome to the channel guys, we are back again and today I'm going to be talking about Enclave by Amwage, so stay tuned for that. And if you like the content, hit that like and subscribe button, really do appreciate it. So Amwage released two fragrances recently, Enclave and Meander. I do actually have a sample for Meander as well, so I'm going to be reviewing that one soon. But the first one that I uh, dove into was Enclave, and I mostly went after this one first. Um, or gravitated to it first because it has a mint note in it. Do really like mint in fragrances. Um, so I wanted to see what this one was like. And of course, Amouage has you know a, a reputation for being high quality, high performing fragrances. So without further ado, we will get into this fragrance. Now, in the opening, I actually find this to be, a, it comes off a little bit boozy, a little bit even watery or almost aquatic and somewhat blue even. Uh, I think that's, you know, the the mintiness in conjunction with other things. And it, it does come off a little bit boozy, which I notice a lot of people are actually comparing this or, well, a good amount of people are actually comparing this to Enigma by Roja. Now, I will say when I first sprayed this and I first smelled this, I did get this feeling of this is really familiar. I have definitely smelled this before. Um, it that particular fragrance did not come to my mind, and you know I think it's more of a I especially the parfum cologne is more of a rich tobacco fragrance that does open with some kind of booziness. Um, so I, I don't think so. It had I, I wouldn't compare it to that fragrance, but there is something familiar in that sort of boozy quality that it has, and I really only get that for you know five or ten minutes. Uh, but then it is quickly overwhelmed or. Uh, what comes to the forefront of this fragrance quite quickly is the mintiness. Now, I will also say that in the opening I do sometimes get a hint of a mouthwash vibe. Uh, I think it is that mintiness again. Mint is one of those things that is a bit risky if done incorrectly because um, you know it can smell like toothpaste or mouthwash or any number of other things and that's just like for me the note of lemon which can smell often like some kind of household cleaner no matter how high quality the fragrance is i sometimes get that vibe even off roja so um that is a little off-putting but it's really only there for a little bit i don't really get it all the time i just sometimes get that impression and it doesn't smell bad of course but it, it is weird to wear a fragrance that has that kind of scent memory attached to it um, and like I said, that's really only in the initial burst because uh, what happens after about 5 to 10, 10 minutes is a lot of the spices start to come in with this fragrance. And I actually found it funny that a lot of people are calling this more of a fall fragrance or a cold weather fragrance because to me this is quite fresh. Um, that mint is very fr fresh. It's supported with a, a very um, nice freshness, almost aquatic vibe. Um, and there is a spiciness there with cardamom and I think that it has some other spices like pink pepper or something. Um, which does give it a spicy sort of backbone. So it is predominantly in the opening a fresh spicy fragrance. And um, it's nice, it's really, really nice. That mint is very refreshing and then it has, um, you know, a little bit of spice to give it something uh, interesting. It's, you know, it's very aromatic and I think it's actually very versatile. And I would actually say, you know, the opening for this is more of a spring summer fragrance just by how uh, fresh and in fact almost aquatic it is at times. Now, as this one dries down, um, it does certainly change. The mint stays there for quite some time, but that sort of bluey, greeny kind of fresh, almost aquatic vibe that this one has definitely disappears. Um, so that really is with the fragrance for a couple of hours and then it does transition. Now, the mint and the spice stay a little bit longer, but then what happens is you get more of the amber and um, you get more of the woodiness, the vetiver. So this does have a bit of a woody dry down, which is nice um, and doesn't feel reminiscent of anything else. The amber uh, to me is not so much like um, a lot of ambers that I've I've smelt. Now this uses a note of something called Amber Extreme. Um, I'm quite sure that's a synthetic note. And um, what it doesn't give me the impression of is the kind of amber you get in a fragrance I actually just recently talked about, which is Ombre Sultan. And that has like a sort of block-like, um, almost dusty kind of an ambery feel. This is nothing like that. It's more of a warm, 
uh, somewhat sweet kind of a chord that you get with this one. Um, and it does even have a little hint of sweetness in that opening, which kind of works to make it feel a little bit blue. Um, so, yeah, you know, it, it does have a, it, it is a really enjoyable, very easy to wear profile. And, and I think the thing about this fragrance, you know, if you think about a lot of amouages, a lot of them are a little bit more challenging, although some of them are very masculine, like Reflection Man. And to me, um, this is kind of similar in the sense that this is a very versatile fragrance. It smells nothing like Reflection Man, uh, but it does have this very, very versatile kind of uh, scent profile where I think you could wear this just about any time. I mean, it really is the kind of fragrance I think you could wear more or less year round as well. Um, the projection and performance on this one is pretty good. I would say eight plus hours and, you know, two hours of good sillage. It's not absolute beast. So I know uh, a lot of a lot of Amouage fragrances are crazy beast mode. This one is not. Um, it definitely does perform well. There's nothing personally I compl would complain about with respect to the projection performance. Um, but it, it, like I said, it does perform well enough. You probably could wear it in the winter as well as in the warmer weather. And like I said, because it's so fresh and uplifting, I do think it leans itself a little bit more to uh, actually being more of a spring uh, summer fragrance, but it is very versatile. I think you can wear this in just about any occasion. It's very inoffensive. It's very pleasant. And it does, especially in the opening, almost have that kind of blue shower jelly kind of vibe. And of course, not quite, um, but it certainly does. Now, with respect to... I, I guess the big thing is that Amouage are not cheap fragrances. I do think this one is going to be a little bit more expensive for what it really is and what it really does. It is a very fresh, mass appealing fragrance, but it at the same time doesn't feel especially or particularly niche. There is that high quality there that you expect from those fragrances, um, but it, it is almost designer-esque in a certain way because like I said, it does come off a little bit blue to me um, and it does have a very, very mass appealing profile. And again, you know, niche fragrances don't need to be um, challenging fragrances or something that not everybody can enjoy, but there is a certain designer-ish kind of DNA that I think um, once you've smelled a lot of them, you know how they do these mass appealing fragrances, even if they smell totally different. And this does sort of uh, fit in with that. So personally, I think it is probably a little bit overpriced at retail. Um, I I'm not sure how much exactly this costs, but I know Amouages are often $300. So I would say get a sample of this one if you like it. It can be worth it, I think. Well, I mean, if you love it, it's, it's, it can always be worth it for you. Um, that's always a personal thing. But uh, personally, if I were to buy this one, which I, I wouldn't mind having something like this because it is such a versatile fragrance, I feel like, um, I would try and get it on the cheap. So, I mean, you should kind of always try and do that. But ultimately, this is one where I feel that it is one of those sort of everyday casual kind of or versatile fragrances that fits in with like Percival or fits in with like Bleu de Chanel or all of those other fragrances and so I mean as easy to wear as a lot of those are um, they're off they're also stuff I don't really want to pay niche prices for right they're these great versatile dumb reach fragrances and this to me is that it does have a nice sort of masculine touch masculine appeal um, and I will say after smelling the whole thing it does have a nice uniqueness to it so it, do it does have a certain genre that it reminds me of as I mentioned but ultimately it doesn't really remind me of other fragrances so it does have that nice um, unique touch now yeah so I think that's about all I have to say about this one it's a nice fragrance I wasn't disappointed um, I think ultimately the retail price point on this one is 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 too high for for me to pay for what it is but you may love it and uh, if you love it often retail is totally worth it for you um yeah i'm looking forward to trying meander i haven't really uh, got my nose on it yet but i'm actually going to be testing it out right after this video so hopefully i'm going to be doing a review on that one soon and hopefully it's uh as positive or maybe in fact even more positive anyways I'm going to cut the video there. Um, leave a comment down below. What is your favorite homage? Have you tried any of the new ones? Are you excited also for interlude, 50, interview, interlude uh, 53?
which sounds completely insane because it is 53% oil or something like that. As if Interlude Man needed to be any more beast mode than it already is. But whatever. Um, I do like Amwash and they have some good ones. So do send me some recommendations, especially if they're not the usual Amwashes that people talk about. Anyways, guys, that's it for this one. And as always, don't forget to like and subscribe. And I'll see you guys in the next video.